Okay, this is uh, chapter one of another story uh, called Maplecrest. I may change the name of it when I get done. <clears throat> Maplecrest, chapter one. What could one say about Edward Martin? Most would not say much, as they would not even know who Edward Martin was. He kept pretty much to himself at 321 Maple Drive. It was an impressive house for sure, a two-story, old, dark brown brick house with two large bay windows on each side of a beautiful mahogany door with two 12-inch side glass panes, both with full-length frosted glass. The door had a half-round frosted glass window above it. The small, eight-foot-wide and eight-foot-tall deep porch that jutted out and there was a full, four full width steps landing up to the door landing. The porch roof formed a 90 degree angle with the peak and had cream colored gingerbread decorations across the top. The tan roof matched the rest of the roof. The flower beds in front of the two bay windows had very nice flower treatments in them. The yard was very carefully maintained and the grass was just about the nicest in town of any property. On the right side of the house was a large carriage overhead that was large enough for any car that chose to drive underneath it. Since the kitchen was at that side of the house, it made grocery deliveries very easy. These days, Edward Martin hardly ever left the house, as nearly everything he needed and wanted was delivered by the store, FedEx, or UPS. There was a large three-car garage back behind the house, and no one was ever sure if there were any cars in there or not. Probably one at a time there were. There were no windows around the size of the garage, nor in the motorized garage doors, so no one could peek in and spy on the contents. The town folk of Maplecrest had always known who lived there, but not much else, and Mr. Martin did not seem to have many visitors that anyone ever saw. He was pretty much the definition of a recluse. The townspeople did not seem to know much about him or his family. If he had one, or a wife if he ever married, no one can ever say they saw children playing in the yard, even the old timers in town. They all knew that he must have been somewhat successful to own a house on a large parcel of land like this. Most knew that the other comparable homes had property tax bills well over $10,000. And so must Mr. Martin, they thought. The average property tax bill in Maplecrest was just over $3,000 to give you an idea. There was even a, a rumor that he was a government spy or a secret agent of the U.S. government, but no one really knew what he did. Maybe he was just wealthy and spent his days managing his money in the markets of some sort. Someone said they saw someone with the same name with a law degree from Princeton, but the school would not verify if this was the same Edward Martin or not. It was clear that whomever he was, and whatever he did, it had to be classified in some way, as no one even in the mayor's office knew anything about him. His city tax bills, water and sewer bills, his utilities were all paid automatically from his bank account at the Merchants National Bank. Only the bank president was allowed to handle Mr. Martin's banking affairs. The bank president, John Miller, was sworn to secrecy. He was nearly 77 years old himself, so he was probably the only one who might have known Edward Martin firsthand. Every so often a limousine would pull up to the carriage drive and would take someone in a black suit and top hat for a trip. 
but no one dared follow the limo. Most people in Maplecrest just lived their lives and paid no mind to 321 Maple Drive. <clears throat> the limo would show up every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and drove out of town on Route 6, so it was thought that maybe Edward Martin was a churchgoer in some neighboring town for privacy. He certainly was a private person. The town of Maplecrest was very well run for a medium-sized town. Crime was non-existent, and people knew to behave themselves in the town as a police chief was an ex-NFL player and demanded everyone conduct themselves in an orderly manner. There was hardly ever a speeding ticket handed out. Everyone graduated from high school, and the two high schools had great athletic programs and state championship music programs from the band to the chorus. The Little League program proved to be a good feeder program for the high school baseball teams, which had won the state championship 14 times in the last 30 years. The town also had its own symphony orchestra and filled all of their chairs with college graduates with music degrees that came from Maple Crest. They did not need to go outside of town to find musical talent as it was all homegrown. The symphony even managed to travel and perform in Europe once every five to ten years and even had their own record label in which to fund the symphony through the sales of their recordings across the country and the world. It was clear that everyone was busy enough with their own lives and pursuits to worry about Mr. Edward Martin, and he was not even in the top ten of things to worry about. He was certainly do, doing fine on his own, whatever that was. The city had a thriving manufacturing base in the automotive and electronic industry, industries, so jobs were always available. The town even had its own college of medicine that was part of the Chicago School of Medicine and had specialties in nursing and cancer research. There were only about 100 beds in the facility, so it was small in comparison to other medical universities. <coughs> The president of the medical school was Dr. David Arnold, who graduated first in his class at Maplecrest and then went on to medical school at the University of Illinois, University of Illinois, graduating first in his class in 71. His wife Mary had a practice in psychology in town as well. It seemed that everyone in town was well connected and had deep roots in the town where they all grew up. They were, for the most part, a very proud city of what the town had become. The mayor of Maplecrest, Roger Adams, was a most likable fellow and had been mayor for over 40 years, many times running uncontested, as there never seemed to be a need for a change in leadership at Maplecrest. Some had thought they might lose him as a candidate for a governor, but he had no such aspirations for higher office, and certainly not for national office in the Senate or House of Representatives. He saw no point in getting involved in that partisan mess. He knew he had a great job and was quite content. Change was inevitable for most towns, but had missed Maplecrest for some reason. But that was about to change and the town would have their hands full dealing with it. They would need help, but it was closer to home than they had ever thought.